Hello, good day. My name is um, Keegan Ramu, and I, I am an agriculture officer in the Ministry of Agriculture Services Division, MAPA Farm. Joining me um, is my fellow colleague, Mr. Antti Miraj, agricultural assistant too. And we will be discussing the propagation of coconut. The assistant too. And we so um, the coconut tree is known as a tree of life. This majestic um, tree anchors the soil with its fibrous root system and projects upwards with its tusk-like structure, leading up to a graceful crown of giant feather-like leaves. The coconut tree starts bearing in three to four years, producing a crop every month in a spiral upward pattern. Nuts can be harvested for fresh coconuts, water in four to six weeks, uh, or for its dry nuts in eight to 10 months. <clears throat> so what we have um, prepared for you today is um, um, a few slides talking about the propagation of coconut, but we like to also give you um, um, further information in terms of um, the brief history of coconuts in Trinidad and Tobago. In 1901, there, there was 14,000 acres of coconut cultivated with coconuts and citrus along the coast of Galeota, Manzalina and Miaro. In 1910, 2 million pounds of co copra were exported along with 3,332 gallons of coconut oil by 1921. There were 3,000 acres under coconut cultivation in Trinidad and 10,000 acres under cultivation in Tobago. The highest acre acreage cultivated was 45,000 in Trinidad in 1930. The next 12 to 26 years, large acreages succumbed to the Cedrus world disease and those areas were replanted with sugarcane. Production continued to decline steadily over the falling years due to poor crop management and the devastating effect of the red ring disease. Today, there is approximately 400 acres of productive coconuts cultivated in Tobago, while in Trinidad, there is approximately 12,000 acres under production, of which 8,000 acres consist mainly of old and unproductive trees, while 4,000 acres under uncultivation under cultivation have mature and young trees. The description of the coconut tree. Scientific name, Coconut nisifera. Um, coconuts are commonly called cocoa, coconut palms, or coconut tree. It belongs to the family Arikia, right? So the second tree, I mean, the, the coconut tree has a tall slender trunk with feather-like leaves at the top. Coconut tree has 13 to 20 inches long pinnate leaves Leaflets have lanceolate shape. They can reach 24 to 35 inches in length. The coconut tree is attached to the ground via a strong fibrous root system. The coconut tree develops male and female flowers. The fruit of the coconut tree is botanically known as a droop, meaning one seed. Um, groups of coconut trees include dwarf coconut trees reaching 20 to 60 feet in height, tall coconut trees um, which grows to 90 feet and hybrid. This is a, a cross between tall and dwarf um, trees. So the role of the coconut tree. The coconut palm serves a multifunctional role. Both small and large scale production of products from the coconut palm makes, us, makes an important contribution to food security. This coconut tree is a common site in Trinidad and Tobago. At the industrial level, the coconut industry is an important source of employment and income and rural, in rural communities. The coconut palm also aids in the prevention of coastal erosion while providing charming landscapes that are attractive to both tourists and locals. Beyond the coastline, the coconut palm is highly demanded for landscaping and home beautification. So lists of products from coconut include fresh green and dry nuts, copra, coconut oil, coconut water. Additionally, the coconut shell is used in various fibers, charcoal, ornamental items, and other products. The leaves of the coconut palm have varying uses, such as basket weaving, roof covering like huts, making of cookie brooms, etc. Copra, oil, milk, cream, and soap from the dry coconut are some of the products that are derived from the local manufacture of coconuts. So the typical yields include um, like planting density for coconut plants, 75 to 150 trees per hectare, 
each tree um, can yield 40 mature fruits per year. The typical oil content of copra is 63 to 60 percent. Copra cake contains 19 to 20 percent protein. 35 to 40 percent of the fruit is husk. The percentage available for core extraction declines with maturity. So this um this next slide shows um a picture of the of a world map, and what it is showing it is showing coconut production at um throughout, throughout the world. So the darker regions will indicate higher productive level, like in um South America and, and Asian countries, which produces over 10 million tons of coconut, and this was in 2020. Um, this slide is um, the wool area production and productivity productivity of coconut in major coconut growing countries. As you can see, um, Guyana, Jamaica, uh, with Guyana producing 10,000 acres of, of coconuts, um, producing 92 million nuts, and their productivity is 9,200 nuts per acre. Similar to Jamaica, which produces 17,000 hectares. 121 um, million nuts and 7,181 nuts per hectare. On average, um, the wool is 5,100, I mean, um, 5,357 nuts per, per hectare. So this next slide shows um, coconut production in terms of tons by country based on rank from 2016 to 2020. Right, this is from the agriculture, Food and Agriculture Organization Corporate um, Statistical Database. So this shows the rank of um, different um, Caribbean islands um, throughout the world. And at the top is um, Dominican Republic. They ranked at 13 in terms of production in 2020. And uh, Guyana second ranked at 25th. Jamaica is ranked at 28th and Trinidad 49. Right, with the other islands, um, St. Lucia, Dominic, and Guinea, as the list goes along. So the world production, the estimated total production of coconut in 2020 was 61 million 520 382 metric tons, right? Down 1% from 62 million 159,626 tons in 2019. The Philippine, Indonesia, and India produce about 7% of the world's total copra, with the Philippines and Indonesia also be, being the world's main coconut oil exporters. Um, trending, the, globe, the global coconut water market is sized at USD 4.2 billion in 2019, with an expected annual growth rate of 16.1% from 2020 to 2027. The Coconut Industry Market Intelligence Report adds that apart from use of coconut oil in co cooking and as a dietary supplement, it is reported to have tremendous cosmetic benefits as well. Coconut oil is said to relieve dry skin and restore the youthful look in skin by aiding the removal of outer layer of dead skin cells, making skin appear smoother. According to April 2016 article in the Wall Street Journal, Coconut oil prices soared nearly 20% in a month, largely because of the growing popularity of specialty products such as coconut water. Other lucrative businesses being developed includes the use of coconut coal, making of peat moss, making charcoal and other cottage crafts. So, um, so in terms of the public sector, we, um, we have um, projects that are contribute that are done to, to contribute towards the coconut development in Trinidad and Tobago. Such projects include um, projects at Mapa Farm, which is at age 544. We are um, this project is development and provision of facility Mapa Farm. The ministry, the ministry continue to upgrade the facility at Mapa Farm as a site for John Plaza conservation of a variety of crops. Other projects include coconut rehabilitation and replanting program in the east coast of Trinidad and also implementation, implementing comprehensive crop biodiversity conservation program for Trinidad and Beagle. Propagation of coconuts. So we get into the propagation of coconuts aspect of this presentation. We will start off with management of coconut nursery, then cultivation of coconut plants and field 
and the other test signs is a coconut. So, so the management of coconut of a co coconut nursery. So we see selection of the mother plant is very important. When we are selecting our our, our seeds for propagation, um, we must select from mother plants that are highly productive, tolerant to pesticide diseases, high yielding water and kernel content. Right? The seeds, seed harvest, selection and storage. Um, seeds are harvested for 10 to 14 months from parent plants and are stored in a cool, dry area. The nursery site selection and nursery seed bed preparation. Um, we use a, a one to two ratio of manual to soil mixture and filter depth of four to six inches in a grow box. The grow box should be no more than four feet wide and two to three feet between grow boxes. As you can see in the middle picture at the bottom of the screen, this is a picture taken from Mapper Farm where we have um, seed beds and this is the layout. Right, so we fill one bed before we go to, the, to another bed. All right, so that is one way of um, keeping these stages in order. So planting a nursery seed bed. Seeds are partially indented in seed bed. Record and signage. Age of coconut seeds are labeled as a germinate from zero to one month, one to two months, two to three months, and four to six months. In terms of irrigation, um, this is done two times daily using sprinklers. Um, a complete fertilizer, example Nutrex, right? Um, this can be applied twice monthly from onset of germination. Seedlings are sprayed um, with a caricide once every two weeks. Um, and apply, you can apply a, a caricide such as Numectin um, seedlings in order to control a red palm mite. Spray these pesticides on the underside of the leaves. The red, the red palm mites uh, and other mites cause yellowing of the leaves and weaken the young plants. Transplanting to field. Coconut seedlings are ready for transplanting at four to six months. Right? Um, upright, vigorous, healthy looking plants are selected to be planted out in the field. So this um this slide depicts um stages of the coconut growth in the nursery. So we label it according to the stage stage of growth. So from the right hand corner, we have seeds collected. Um, in the same nursery, um, after one month is labeled one month. After two to three months is is labeled when we just um two three months, and four to six months thereafter. At four to six months is ready for sale. So soil requirements. The ideal soil condition for better growth and performance of the palm are loose, well-drained soil with good water cooling capacity. However, coconut can be grown under different soil type. The Growth and Bigger website of the Agricultural Services Division provides information on soil capabilities. Um, you can go to our website and, and go to our soil capability map and just click on any area in Trinidad and you'll get an idea of what kind of crops can be grown in that area. Um, in terms of land preparation, um, request a soil test from your county office or call soil department. Um, soil test should be done to determine soil requirements. Plan layout before clearing land space. For example, roads, drains, spacing, and orientation of the trees, as well as the site on what trees will be planted and compatibility. Compact soil should be plowed and rotivated. Drainage, seven meters to nine meters apart along rows. Mark out planting holes. Planting season. The coconut is a plant that is largely dependent on the presence and use of water. Hence, the planting is done at the beginning of the rainy season. There, they are planted immediately or at least three days after removal from the nursery to avoid mortality. Spacing and digging of plant, plant hole. Tall varieties, you can use a spacing of 25 to 25 feet. Bar varieties, 20 by 20. Hybrids, 23 by 23. Um, plant holes are dug at 30 by 30 by 30 centimeters. 
um, is repaired and topsoil and manure and fertilizers are mixed in mix and placed in holes before planting. Um, you can use a, a balanced fertilizer, three ounces. It's gonna, it's gonna be added um, for coconut plants at planting time. Um, just just for um, refresher for our farmers, the NPK fertilizer, the N is nitrogen, P is phosphorus, and K stands for potassium. At the planting of the coconut, of course, at that, at that planting stage, um, you want to use a high phosphorus fertilizer. Like example, this one here is a 12-24-12. Fertilizer application. At one year and below, um, half pound of um, is at planting, and six months later, it can be applied. At two years, 1.5 pounds twice per year, um, most mostly in June and December because this is the when there there's water available, right? Dissolve the fertilizer for it to get to the root of, of of the plants. After three years, three pounds twice per year, June and December, and bearing stage, um, four years and over, five five pounds twice per year, June and December as well. Irrigation and drainage. Most coconut fields in Trinidad and Tobago are rain fed. However, coconut plants respond well to irrigation. It is necessary to ensure good growth, development, and yield. Rainfall of 125 to 195 meters per month is ideal. Adult trees require 200 liters of water once in 47 days. Will be beneficial. However, drip irrigation system can help manage water more efficiently. In terms of weeding, weeds generally affect the growth and performance of the plants. For seedlings, their pits should be cleared of weeds periodically. Routine brush cutting every two to three months for the first two years of growth is ideal and spraying can be incorporated thereafter. Alternate brush cutting with contact spray for weeds is preferred. Spraying should be done early in the morning or late in the evening um, because as the, as the day progresses, um, the wind it, it becomes very windy, and when you spray, the chemicals can get on the coconut plants. So you wouldn't want that to happen. So you spray early in morning or late in evening. Right. So now um, I'll pass you on to my colleague, Mr. Anti Mirage, and he will he will um, discuss the pests and diseases of coconuts. Thank you, Mr. Ramu. My name is Anthony Maharaj. We now reach pests and diseases. Pests and diseases should be controlled using a preventative and or integrated pest management program. The major pests that affect the coconut plants include the rhinoceros palmarium beetle. This is a vector that transmits the Brucephalentus cocophilus nematode that causes the red ring disease that you all may know. Red palm mite or RPM for short, the Riola indica and coconut mite and scales. The major uh, diseases that affect coconut plants would include the red ring disease, bud rot, and seizures wilt. Also, lethal ye um, yellowing, which is not present in Trinidad and Tobago. Good agricultural practices and integrated pest management. A pest and disease control and, prevent and prevention program should be obtained to follow strict guidelines and effectiveness. Establish an early pest management program before and after transplanting in the field. Then throughout the life of the crop, in the Caribbean, the red palm mite and rhinoceros palmyrum beetle are the most serious pests affecting our trees down here. They affect both the leaves of the nuts and reduce crop yields. Continue the spray regime, which begin at the seedling stage in order to control mites. Use a mist blower or spray can to spray the undersurface of the leaflets and young inflorescence. That, that, uh, those will be the flower bunches where the pests um, thrive. Spraying is done every two months at seedling stage. Also, you can become familiar with the symptoms of the red palm mite or the rhinoceros beetle. Those will be like the lethal yellowing or the red ring disease. Example, the mite will appear in colonies on the underside of the leaf on feeding, they produce small yellow spots which develop into large visible scars. 
areas should be weeded and kept clear of weeds and fallen branches at all times. In other words, sanitation of your field. Tools should should be used to sanitize often with alcohol based solution. For example, your cutlass or whatever you may use to clear land and clear and clear grass and weeds. Fertilizer program should be designed and here to for plant resistance also. A coconut field is maintained by brush cutting for the first two years and spring and brush cutting is alternated thereafter. Preferably a contact with the site should be used for control of weeds. Also, there are pheromone traps that are utilized for control of pests and also transmission of diseases in the coconut field. Instruction for use of chemicals must be adhered to. This is a diagram showing a picture of the red palm mite. They are, they are very tiny, about 0.5 millimeters with, with legs. They are usually found on the underside of the leaves and are more common in the dry season. Different stages of the pest can be found on the underside of the leaves. And the symptoms are, as I mentioned before, are yellowing and necrosis of lower leaves. As you can see, if you watch the tree that are infected by the, bee, by the um, red palm mite, you will see severe um, yellowing. And also if you pass your hand at the understanding of the leaf, you will see a uh, tick residue, a red residue on your fingers. Right? Some management strategies can be several natural enemies, including mites and insects that have been found associated with the red palm mite. For example, the Ambilicius lagon lagonesis being the predominant predometer, predator. Sorry. Rainfall has a negative impact on the population as well. So you shouldn't plant in shade areas. Mites will multiply rapidly under these conditions. So you can also prepare neem solutions and spray plants. Those are more natural solutions you can use. Prepare and spray plants every 10 days with the following solution. That will be like, for example, a tablespoon of this washing liquid and a cup of water. You can mix thoroughly and use one tablespoon of this solution in a three liter of water and apply it to the field. For coconut plantation, acarides can also be used as part of an integrated crop management approach. The, another example of a pest here is the coconut palm beetle. He also transmits the nematode that causes the red ring disease. The symptoms of, of, the, of, of the coconut palm beetle will be yellowing from the tip of the leaflets to the base and in the older to younger leaves. You'll have premature not fall, holes in the stem, petioles will break at the base, brick red or brownish red rings. This will be average about 2.5 to 5 centimeters from the edge of the trunk. And also the palm dies. The affected plant root um, tissues producing a characteristic odor also. So you actually get a scent. For example, in the pictures um, down below, you will see in figure five, the actual ring. That's what we call the red ring disease. And from three and four and six, you will see the actual yelling of the leaves. And, and also the holes and whatnot. Some management and strategies could be early detection and destruction and removal from the infested palms are key to management. Aggressive phytosanitation is the best chance to hold the spread of the red ring disease to nearby trees. As we said before in the previous slide, you can also sanitize your cutlass and whatever tools and equipment you use to clear debris and clear infected trees and whatnot to avoid spread. Dead palms should not be cut should be cut, sorry, into small pieces and spread with, with insecticide. Either metomel or trichloroform or whatever, or carbon fan, or carbon fan, to control the larvae of the beetle. Trees should be removed and burned. Installation of beetle traps use, using the, the rhinco magnet combined with the, uh, the uh, rhinochlor pheromone and the positioning of traps in the field is important. Following, also known as resting of, of infested land. So like if you clear your land or whatever, you can rest the land and don't plant anything for a certain amount of time. Planting in, in, in new areas also where there are no coconut trees. The strategy adopted should be an integrated crop management approach. Here are some examples of traps that you can use and are very cost effective and little or no money to spend. What happened, we have the five gallon bucket beetle trap, as you can see, um, to the left hand side here, when you raise the cover, the beetles will enter the top and you will get trapped in the actual bucket yeah, and using just the just the pheromone and the magnets. No, no, no um, pesticide needed. We also have to the right hand side, you have the two gallon, um, oh no, sorry, or the one gallon bottle beetle trap or the coated one gallon beetle trap, whichever you, you may choose to use. 
And this in these two traps too, we also have the, the hormone and we have the um the magnetic trap there that the beetle would actually crawl and he would cling on to the serrated mesh to, onto the green color one to the right hand side and he would fly in and get trapped also and he would lay at the bottom. So basically this this should be done. This is an improved design and a funnel shape trap that reduces the escape of the beetle. So basically, as I said before, it, remo it removes the need of using an, uh, of an insecticide that you also have to pay an additional cost. Basically, the funnel traps would be placed in the field at least low, low to the ground because, because the insects actually fly low. And what happened like every two weeks to three weeks, you can replace the, um, the, the, the pheromone and the magnetic. Personal disease control. Considerations when placing the trap in the field. The pheromone, the rhino phonal pheromone, marketed as a rhino cutter. Trapping should be done only after other recommendation um, and methods for controlling the coconut palm beetle damage has been completed. The beetle attacks coconut more than 2 to 2.5 years and older, so basically not the younger trees, basically the, on, on the older trees. A vent is made on the broad side of the container to allow entry of the insect, and the traps are, pay, are placed at least about one and a half meters high on a stake close to the coconut field like the guy is doing here in the picture we have here, to the coconut field as the beetles um, fly low, as I said before. And the traps should be examined weekly as, as, as beetle counts are made. So after this period, you would just change and you would dispose and destroy the beetles. Test and disease control, or the outcome of using beetle traps in the field. Through the European Union or the Cariform Finance Coconut Industry and Enhancement Support for the Caribbean Project, CADI collaborated with MALF, that's Ministry of Agriculture, Land and Fisheries Research Division, resulting in farmers' utilization of the RICO magnet, ethyl acetate, that's the chemical um, exactly, Synergies combined with the rhino claw pheromone technology, thereby replacing the use of insecticide and molasses in the pheromone traps, resulting in lower treatment costs and providing an environmentally safer management practice. This tool can also be used to, in to increase the trapping of the beetles and also reduce the population levels at a faster rate compared to the traditional farmer's practice. The use of the pheromone also reduces beetle damage to coconut trees due to reduction of intellect population. It is more important to seek the advice of the agricultural county office nearby you or someone who is well versed in the area before placing pheromone traps in the damaged areas to get a successful result. Now, hand you back over to my colleague, Mr. Ramo. Thank you, Mr. Anthony. So um, I'll continue with um, the coconut cultivation. Um, so after we have um, been able to control the pest and disease in the field, we'll be getting um, high yields, right? So in terms of harvesting, the tall coconuts start to bear at four to five years. Um, dwarf coconuts start to bear at three to four years. And um, coconut is a perennial crop that produces um, a new crop every month. It takes four to six weeks for water for water not harvest and um, for copra it takes eight to ten months for maturity but that is to dry nuts the mature nuts are harvested when at least one nut in the oldest bunch start becoming dry these nuts can be easily identified um identified when the exocarp that is the outer layer of the, of the coconut um or, or of one or two nuts in in the bunch starts turning brown in terms of yield, yields vary depending on the level of management and season. Wet and dry, that is the wet and dry season. With good management, each tree can yield 10 to 120 nut, uh, water nuts per year, and approximately 40 dry nuts per year. These production levels can be an economical, an economic su success. Um, the way forward, through collaboration, um, an agricultural specialist was brought into the country in 2012 to conduct research for in, formulating a biological agent, um, a biological agent for, to control and eliminate the red palmite, to reinvigorate the, the coconut industry that has suffered a decline over the years, mainly due to the red palm mite infestation. The Caribbean Agricultural Research and Development Institute and the St. Patrick Coconut Grower Cooperative Society signed a general agreement for technical cooperation in 2013. 
Also, um, the alliances, the alliance coconut industry development for the Caribbean emerged from the European Union funded in intra ACP program and the Caribbean Regional Indicative Program. Um, this this project targeted the uh, improvement of, in, um, of income and employment opportunities, food security and overall competitiveness of the Caribbean coconut industry. The project comprises 12 Caribbean countries and has been implemented through a partnership with the Caribbean Agricultural Research Development Institute, the International Trade Center and other important regional and national partners. The project is implemented following the Alliance for Action, I a4A approach, a participatory multi-stakeholder approach for sustainable agribusiness sector development. In the Caribbean, the A4A aims to enhance the competitiveness of small-scale farmers in coconut value chain through better local, regional and global market integrate in, in the integration and production performance. This will involve the integrated and coordinated two-prong approach by enhancing the competitiveness of the coconut farmers and facilitating an integrated coconut value chain. Coconut sensitization workshop hosted by CADI in collaboration with Ministry of Agriculture, Land and Fisheries. The workshop will address issues of lethal yellowing and improve integrated pest management methods for managing rhinocephorus and palmarum beetle. The workshop, which was facilitated by um, specialist technical team from the International Tree Center Coconut Industry Board, Jamaica, and University of Florida was, fu was fu funded by European Union under the Alliances of Coconut Industry Development Expansion and Enhanced Support for the Caribbean project. Um, we, now, we now come to the end of our presentation. Um, these are some of our references, right? And we will now entertain um, questions and, and answers at this point in time. So I'm not seeing any um any questions so far. So I sure you all have a lot of questions to ask. And um right. So So I see in um I see a question where can I get some coconut plants to buy? Well you can get plants um from agricultural services division, Mapa Farm, and also the other propagation stations, Large Union Propagation Station and St. Augustine Nurseries. Right? We sell plants at these, these locations. Okay, um, in terms of um, compatibility, I'm seeing a question here. What plants can be combined with coconuts? So, so if you do not want a, 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 say a coconut plantation where it's coconuts alone and you want to have different trees on a plantation, like an agroforestry um, plantation, um, you can look at um, spacing is very important. So, when you're looking at instead of 25 by 25, you can probably look at a at a, a, a further spacing that is to facilitate other trees because trees like sunlight, and without sunlight, it, the I mean if there's um if if you shade out the sun, the trees tend to go um, thin and tall, and they'll they'll be competing with with each other. So you need to have proper spacing. <clears throat> okay, so um, I see a question here. What can be done to improve fruit set? Well, in terms of proper management, um, the whole, the whole, the whole system, the whole um, thing about cultivation of coconut from the start to beginning is what you, what you is what you put in is what you'll get out of it, right? Like selection of proper um, seedlings from good. Um, parent material, um, fertilizing program, controlling of pest diseases, right? Um, making sure that you you have proper um, phytosanitation on your field, weed management, um, setting up traps. All those will contribute 
right? To, to get in a good outcome and good food set. Right? I'm seeing a question here from Lolly Maharaj. That happened to make a corner plant and it rot and fell. And in my part of the presentation, Mrs. Maharaj, what happened probably? What happened there probably is that you probably had a case of red ring disease or something like that. So as we advise that you cut and burn or remove the, the remains of the tree from the field. And you can use the whatever pesticides or whatever traps that I had mentioned, either the bucket trap or the or the bottle trap, to see if you can catch any of the beetles or or, or whatever pest that was affecting it. Okay, I'm also seeing a question here. Um, when can we get beetle? Where can we get beetle traps to purchase? Mm. So what happened? Um, with the collaboration with Cardi and Measure I called here, they have designed a, a system that they use in um recyclable material. And is inexpensive. Like you can use the normal five gallon buckets, or you can use the um one. the one gallon bottles. Um, two one gallon bottle and put the other one to the other one. So those are those are, um those are recyclable, and free of course. Is that you have to buy the pheromone traps, the pheromone um to put into it, right? So that should be free. Okay, so I've seen a question. What is the best um, fertilizer to use during bearing stage? So remember the slide where I showed you um, the NPK and N is nitrogen, P is phosphorus, K is potassium. You'll want a higher um, K ratio. So when you go to the garden, when you go to purchase any fertilizer, you tell them you want it for bearing and they'll recommend a fertilizer high in K. Right? And I hope that answered the question. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of questions mm -hmm. here, right? So I'm going through the questions to, to choose um to choose the ones that you want to answer because they there are quite a lot of questions here. So that's um bear with me, right? Okay, so I see a question here. Um, this person said, um, I planted about 120 coconut trees almost one year now, but they appear to have a very slow growth rate. What can be done? I sorted them every month. Okay, so um, to coconut trees basically depends on the um on the type of coconut tree. If it's a, a tall, a dwarf, or a hybrid, um, it takes um say three to four years for the the dwarf. It all takes four to five years. Um, it all that depends on the beer, I mean. So all that depends on your management practices. So if you if you um make sure that that all these um, um factors are dealt with in terms of irrigation, weed management, spraying for pest and diseases, fertilizing, um, your tree should show significant growth, right? And especially water. Remember, we have two seasons. We have um dry season and wet season. And during the dry season, you have slower growth rate as compared to wet season. So you just get a boost of uh, growth during the, the rainy season, right? <clears throat> right, so uh, if that answers the question, um, the tree is only one year old. So with time, by three to four years, that tree will start to bear, right? Once you meet all the requirements of the plants, right? But fertilizing, fertilizing, um, water isn't watering is important, as well as the person person disease control. Any other questions? Hmm? 
Okay, I see a question here. Um, they said, hi, any answers on, on the relevance of planting these, especially for the planter who plants in quantity? Um, I I don't be I don't believe so, but um, but in terms of um planting, you have to when you're planting co country in terms of um, in terms of um, designing. Let's go after the slide. Okay, so you plan layout before clearing land, land space, right? So this is another land preparation, um, right? So so when you when you decide um, on planting these, it wouldn't really matter because once you have a plan layout of the plants of the plants you're gonna plant in an area, you have to first you have to first make sure that. Um, that you, you have a layout first, right? So if it's drainage, spacing, the orientation of, of the different plants you plant in the field, um, you make sure that those things are met. Um, and in terms of these for planting, it all depends solely on you because you have to manage the plant properly in order to get a good result. Okay. OK, so um, I'm not seeing uh, um, any more questions coming in. Um, this brings us to the end of our presentation on propagation of coconut. Um, thank you on behalf of um, Agriculture Services, Minister of Agriculture, for, for your time. Thank you.